cardiac surgery. As we know, this static systems, we all used to. This is a digital plane transferred to the surgical site by a rigid interval lines. The dynamic systems, in contrast, have a real-time representation of the surgical field where the surgeon can orientate himself relative to the surgical site in the plane. The system that I use for my research, the Navigant, Navigant Surgical Navigation System, allows for changes intraoperatively, making a major contrast to the static system where an um, intraoral uh, appliance would then be rigid and non changeable. The aim of the accuracy the aim of this study was to evaluate the accuracy of dental implant plates in vitro to use when using dynamic navigation surgery in a partially dangerous patient. The patient selection, we have eight patients using a fixed rehabilitation with at least one dental implant. Possibly dangerous maxillas or mandibles were selected, mixed populations of smokers and non-smokers the general good health. Infections were done minimum two months prior to implant surgery. The dental treatment was performed with the Three operative CBCT scans were made for the planning purposes. The scans were made using the Alara principle. No dual skin scan protocol is necessary. The patient enters the scanner where he simultaneously scanned with the intraoral stamp and as the normal anatomy of the patient itself. The stent is in kept in position by an intraoclusal putty index to stabilize it during the scanning process. The stent itself is from a thermoplastic material that can be molded in the patient's mouth prior to the scan. This is the same scan, uh, the same point. The marker is the same one to be used on the scan as it would be used in the surgery. The scan, after the scan is done, the document images is then transferred to the software. This um, process that happens on your computer is actually downloaded within seconds. The potential location of the implant placement can be planned in a prosthetic user and away. And then we've done that. The two clinicians who place the virtual implants also perform the surgeries. The optical trackers, which I will explain in a few moments, were then connected to the handpiece and to the patient itself. The osteotomies were prepared flatless at 1,500 RPM. At least one then supplied implant was placed. The covering of the implant was done as we see clinically fit the saturation. No immediate learning was done at the moment. Now, here I would explain to you the workflow of the system. Here you see the thermoplastic oral stent that is molded inside the patient's mouth, connected by a lock and key system to the scanning potential. This is stabilizing the pegs into this material, and this allows for the stability of your scan. This is vital for the data transformation in this technology. On the left hand, you see now after the DICOM files have been imported into your software, you can do your prosthetically driven planning. This can then be achieved by yourself and a colleague. On your right hand, you can now see that the scanning producer has been swapped with the optical tracker. Same concept with the lock key system to ensure continuity. Again, yeah. I've made a presentation on a model to show you the optical tracker connected by the lock and key system to the thermoplastic material, the same one that was used in the scanner. On the right hand, you see the optical tracker connected to the surgical handpiece. These two are picked up and calibrated to each other by means of the optical camera. During the calibration process of the two now, the stent has been placed in the patient's mouth and calibrated. First, only with the handpiece, and then secondly, with the drill bits attached to it. On the right, you will see now the calibration process filling up here. It is 
Celebration process in the downstream income to activate one income, celebrate, activate another income in the celebration system. This happens very fast. On the left hand, you will see the actual scheme that the surgeon sees while performing the procedure. The surgeon will feel this represented and you can guide his income and the live computer guidance into the osteotomy by means of the diameters and, and the dimensions of the left corner here. This will represent the depth, angle, muscle, plato, and easy distal relations to position. Within four to eight weeks after the surgery, we've taken post open for CBCT scans. This was clearly done for research purposes. The accuracy measurements was done by a third person not involved in the planning or execution of the surgeries. By using the accuracy estimated software incorporated into the Navigator software. The accuracy is described using four different parameters, and this was done by superimposing the pre operative planning with a post operative scan. We measured four different deviations the lateral coronal, the lateral apical deviation, the depth deviation, and the global apical deviation. As a result, on the eight patients, the four males and four females, we had two current smokers with a mean age of 52 years. 15 implants were placed and analyzed, and all the implants had a primary stability. This table represents our results. On the left, you will see the lateral coronal deviation. This translates to a prosthetic complication. This is the deviation at the point of entrance. Lateral apical deviation and vertical apical deviation, the two central columns, represent our deviation at the apex of the implant. And this is in translation to the surgical risk. On the far right, the global apical deviation represents the the proximity to the vital structures. Also, the aesthetic outcome of the implant. The top plot on the left presents the angular deviation. It is important here to note the mean deviation of 7,11 degrees. This deviation could be easily restored with commercially available prosthetic components. On the right hand side, you see the global deviation, which is in essence the three dimensional deviation of the apex of your implant. Of importance here is the 2.13 millimeter deviation with a 95 percent certainty that this deviation will be between 1.4 millimeter and 2.8 millimeter. However, it is important to report on the outline because they represent the surgical risk. The deviations at the shoulder of the apex could be expected. Deviations described in this study are compared to previous published data on antidepressant systems. Higher deviations were noted compared to steroid interactive surgery. Also to note here, this is an experimental study, patients were reported from the first time onwards. It is a learning curve in the product. We do expect in our future cases. Of our results. Advantages of comparing this to the static guidance systems. I have tactile sensitivity in my hands when I do this surgery. I can feel my bone. I have a clear view of my surgical field. I can see where I work and I can ask my assistant to control what I'm doing there while I focus on the computers in doing my surgery. By having this view, I have proper irrigation of I have enough water in my surgical site when performing my osteotomy. I have the possibility to correct the initial deviation because you have a live feed of where you need to start into the mouth. You have the possibility to alter your surgical plan. This would be diameter, length, angulation, and even position. This do happen and it's wonderful to have when you're Dealing with the surgical guidance components, the 
last but not least, this work does not involve the need for the body. Thank you, gentlemen, and thank you for your attention.